I came from a quite poor family. There was just mother and three little ones. I never knew my father. But she was a weaver in a Lancashire mill town. And next door to her weaving was a woman called Ashcroft. I can remember the name so well. And when I was due to leave school at the age of 16, she talked to Mrs Ashcroft, as weavers did, and she said, oh, send him to the power station. They give you overalls. Uh, and my mother said to me, right, uh, you can go for an apprenticeship and you go into the power station. To be a station manager in those days, I guess it's the same today, w w was an accolade. It was considered to be the best job in the enterprise, apart from the chairman's job, you know. There were only two jobs. You were either the chairman or the power station manager. And I was a power station manager. It's absolutely great to be here. As you know, I'm an old station manager. It's a long time ago. It's something like 37 or 38 years ago since I walked through the door as a new manager of Rugeley. What about yourself? Where do you start here? Well, I've actually been here now for nearly 11 years, awesome. which, which I keep getting told makes me the longest serving power station manager of all time at Rugeley, which makes me feel very old, but uh, also puts me in a, into an interesting group of people. So I've been in the power industry ever since I left a university, which was back in 1984. Great to have you back here, you know. When I talk to people here who've been here for some time, do you remember Granville Camsey? Yes, some of them do. And everyone has got a little anecdotal tale about some of Granville's moments. What is your managerial demand today? In simple terms, what are the things that keep you awake at night? What are the things that give you problems? Uh, the technical ones sure. for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think for me, really, there's sort of two parts to this. The first part is um, making sure that the plant is operating right on the day. Mm -hmm. And as part of that is making sure that the people are working safely. We've got all the right systems in place. Mm -hmm. We've got good availability. We've got good efficiency. The business is being run well. But that's sort of almost the least part of it. The next part is to be almost up in the crow's nest looking forward and saying, well, what is coming at coal-fired power plants? Because right now, we're kind of a difficult business, but we don't really like coal. No. You cannot get away from the fact that if you burn coal, you produce carbon dioxide. Mm. And I'm sure going back to your time, carbon dioxide wasn't on the agenda at all. Now we have carbon dioxide trading schemes, we have carbon taxes, we have emission credits, all manner of things going on. So really, one of my big challenges right now is trying to understand the legislation that's coming at us, uh -huh. trying to understand the mood and music and try and decide where this business is going. The issues for me as a manager here were firstly labour relations. We had the air station going, of course, which has been pulled down now. There was something like a thousand people on site. If there were a thousand, there was about 1,100 shop stewards. Uh, there were four very big powerful unions in those days uh, to say nothing about Arthur Scargill and the coal board in full flight. So here on the ground, therefore, my daily life was full of difficulties with the labour. When I used to come into this power station, there was no doubt as an engineer one felt an enormous excitement at the sheer power of the place. I mean, this power station will satisfy the electrical demands of some tens of thousands of people and commercial entities. So you get this feeling of absolute energy in manufacture. And there are a number of places you can go to really sense that both physically uh, and mentally. If you stand in front of a 500 megawatt turbine, you can hear that continuous hum of the alternator. You can feel the vibration because lumps of rotors like this going around at 3,000 revs vibrate 
and controlling that vibration takes some doing, but you get that sense of sheer energy. The other place I can remember, I used to go down into the mill bay. As I said, you grind coal in mills. There are seven of them, i.e. one spare one. And there, it's, it, it, it's like an inferno, stygian gloom. It's full of dust. It's full of noise. You can hear uh, the coal mill banging and clattering. In fact, you need ear defenders to preserve your sanity. But you do get that feeling of raw energy about to be converted. And there's no doubt, if you're like me, a lapsed engineer, it still brings goosebumps to you when you come back into a place like that and hear it. If I, if I just comment on the old A station, the old A station had five units. In fact, the station I joined when I was a lad some 52 years ago had four units and the last one was just being built in 1952. And that was the latest thing by English Electric. It was a 40 megawatt job. That was of enormous size in those days. Here we are, uh, having pulled down a station which had 120 megawatt units and was stood in the control room of a station with 500 megawatt units. I know that now, if we were buying units, big ones today, we would buy 1,000 megawatt units. And it's to the credit of the CGB in the 50s and 60s, when Sir Christopher Hinton was the chairman, they took the bold decision to have a fleet of 500 megawatt units throughout the country. They would provide the bedrock of the electricity need for the UK. Great to be in this control room. It's the centre of this power station, so it really is the nerve centre of this big industrial installation. What I noticed when I came in is the vast difference there is between what it was like when I was here all those years ago and what it's like now. The advent of computer control in power station engineering, science and technology has had a massive impact. In fact, we wouldn't have had we didn't have screens like they have. Everything was individually monitored by a particular instrument. And the control knobs were all over everywhere. So I guess the operator demand, and these guys are exceedingly skilled, the operator demand then was quite different than now. Well, David, I used to come in sometimes and think, what am I doing here? Beset by labour. We used to have a mantra, we never close. You know, it, it became one of my pet phrases. Seven days a week, of course, you know, need to work. We never closed. I found it exciting and challenging, but occasionally quite worrying, if I remember rightly. I wonder when you come in and sit down, if you have five minutes, you won't have many five minutes. What do you think it well, is like? I, I suppose from my point of view, the, the great joy of this job is almost the challenge that you really don't know what is going to come through your door next. And it could be anything from a significant health and safety problem, or it could be a plant availability problem, it could be uh, a sort of human resources mm -hmm. problem, it could be industrial relations, and you've got to suddenly be able to jump into whatever sort of understanding and skill set is needed. So every day is different, mm -hmm. and that makes it a very full on job and very interesting, but at times a little bit frustrating because there's all these things that you know you want to do, mm -hmm. but often you're getting involved in these sort of you know short term and genuine real problems right now. Well, I can sense whilst there are big differences in the world between my time here and your time here, there's that constant set of things which excite, which challenge, which make the job of a station manager, I think, the very best one you can have in the industry.